uh, Dr. Suraj, he needs no introduction. Members uh, is a role model for uh, especially me and many others, especially in uh, from BMC. And uh, he's a congenital champion, a born cha genius and champion. And uh, always a topper, always uh, multiple gold medalists in MBBS. He was my immediate senior in BMC. And uh, I know him very closely and I had a close association with him. And uh, uh, RGHS gold medalist in MS general surgery with uh, oofing 69% in uh, MS. And also now uh, currently a urology resident in INU, uh, BMCRI. Over to you, Dr. Suraj. Thank you, Kishan. Thank you so much uh, for the wonderful introduction. Uh, actually, you are a little bit exaggerated about uh, me. <laughs> I'm really privileged to give a talk and uh, you're doing a wonderful job. I thank Dr. Kishan and the entire White Army team. They're doing a really a wonderful job, uh, which is beneficial for all the students, uh, the UG students. So you're, uh, they're utilizing their time to the maximum in this uh, lockdown period. So, okay, I think most of them have already logged in right now. So, good evening, uh, my dear students. So, today I'll be uh, speaking about this topic, how to face and succeed in examination. Uh, you know, you all would have uh, listened to so many lectures regarding your uh, subject topics and your uh, different various uh, theory topics. So, this is something which is out of the box and uh, which is actually crucial. Many people uh, used to ask me uh, every now and then, like, uh, what are the things which we need to keep in mind whenever we are preparing for our examination. So today I'll just uh, brief you about some uh, tips and uh, suggestions which, uh, which might be helpful for your uh, examination. So initially I'll tell you a few things about your uh, theory examination but today mainly my talk will be regarding uh, in detail about the practical examination. Okay. So I would like to start my talk by uh, uh, quoting these few beautiful lines. Uh, this was told to be told to me by uh, one of my most favorite teachers, uh, Dr. Apur Mehra, sir. I think most of you know him. He's an orthopedic surgeon and uh, he conducts this ortho doom dadaka class and uh, it's a very popular uh, class. He motivates the students so, so nicely and is an inspiration to so many students, uh, including myself. So these were the lines uh, which he used to tell in, in his class. Uh, it means that uh, whatever is there in the fate, the God has already written your fate and whatever is there, you are destined to get it. Nobody can snatch it away from you. But still, you need to work hard. You need to work hard. Why? Because the, the amount of hard work which you put in, whenever uh, God sees that he, he will rewrite your destiny. He, the, because of the amount of hard work which you put, he will rewrite your destiny to get something which is better than what you actually deserve. Okay, so that is the reason why you need to work hard, even if you are bound to get what is there in your faith. Okay? And uh, these are some lines uh, which you must always keep in mind if you want to come up in life. Always, first and foremost, respect your teachers. They shape you into what you become and they build a strong foundation in you. Even if you become very much successful later in life, never forget them. Whenever you meet them, greet them and then speak to them, never ever forget your teachers. And next, respect your parents, no matter what. Because in the end, it is your family which will be your strong support for whatever you do or wherever you go in your life. So uh, always respect your parents and your family and all the elders. And also develop contacts in your circles and have some strong bonded friends. Because if at all you want to come up in life, you need to go along with everyone. You can't go alone and succeed alone in, in your life. You have to have uh, connections with everybody and you should have a strong uh, friendship group. So now coming to our to today's topic. So first I would like to give you some few tips regarding your uh, theory examination. Then we'll go into detail about the practical exam. So first of all, I would like to tell, always start preparing well in advance. So you are, you are people will usually have this exams in December. So never think that, okay, still you have a long time to go. Let us start much later. Still many months are there because by the time you realize time flies very fast. Okay, so always start your preparation well in advance. You'll have time, buffering time for revising also and studying certain other extra aspects. And it's always beneficial if you start well in advance. And prepare a timetable. You know, not everybody has the same pace or can study the same thing in the same amount of time. Each one is different. 
so according to your capacity you yourself know your what is best for you and what is your capacity so prepare a timetable and always try to stick to it as much as possible so whatever you decide like for today if you want to study so many chapters try as much as to finish it in time never keep on postponing your things and uh, perseverance is the most important thing so for example i have seen some students you study for uh, 12 hours 14 hours one day next day you are very tired you study only for 2 3 hours and then sleep and again the next day you feel you study for a long time so instead of that have a regular fixed schedule and that perseverance is very important each and every day you must stick to that much amount of hard work which you have to put in and uh, one more important point is audit your day to day activity study study activity okay so for example if you have thought you was finished three chapters today at the end of the day whatever you have read you yourself you are the best person to audit your day to day study so whether you have done it or if you are not able to do what is the reason for for you not being able to do this so uh, whatever is the negative factor you yourself can correct it in the best possible way and uh, whenever you prepare a plan for the day it should be done the night before the that day if you think that okay uh, the day you will start then you will start thinking what you have to uh, prepare for that day you are already too late so on the previous day before you go to sleep the next day whatever you plan to study make a note of it just a brief note of it and then so that the next day when you get up you are already ready in your mind to study for what is required for that day and this sort of short term planning that will definitely help you in reaping the long term benefits no doubt you must have a long term goal and you must know in these many months i need to study so much like that but your day to day uh, uh, audit and your weekly planning that helps a lot in uh, in coming preparing for your exam and one more very important question which lot of students ask me is okay for a particular subject there are so many books two three books are available so if i read only from one book is it sufficient or buying another book is it a waste actually but what i would tell you is no knowledge is a waste okay uh, whatever topics are given nicely in one particular book you can definitely go through that book and read from another book also whatever knowledge you gain is never a waste it will never go away you never know where that will come in handy and where it will help you so always try to acquire as much knowledge as possible from as many books there is never a dearth for knowledge and now coming to the just the day before the exam uh, many people what they do is they try to uh, be awake the whole night try to study try to revise again and again as much as possible and sacrificing their sleep but uh, i'll tell you that is definitely not a good idea have a good sleep the night before the exam so in this way your mind is also fresh you will have a clear thought process in your exam and you can answer your exam in a cool state of mind never be tensed and you while answering the examination always attempt all the questions never leave any question even if you don't know anything about the particular question at least answer some or some points which are relevant to it or which you know which are not exactly pertaining to the question but still some way connected to the question okay, you may end up getting one mark or two marks for that question no doubt but who knows that one or two marks might save you and become crucial in the end so that's very important and all the discussions readings notes and the clinics which you have everything is important you might feel some day you are just sitting chatting with your friend and then discussing some points that might be crucial to you in the examination so never think that okay this is not important only whatever i sit and study before the exam only that is important like like that each and everything whatever you whenever you are taking notes during your clinics or during your uh, classroom teaching or some small study materials which you stick to your notebook everything is important you never know when these things come in handy and these are crucial in those one or two marks few marks which will either sail you from being pass to fail Uh, fail to pass or uh, getting just few ranks in the top okay and when you are answering the questions in the exam always think from the examiner's point of view whenever you are answering think okay if i am the examiner and i am correcting this answer what i will expect so keeping that in mind if you answer you know very well where and how you should answer so that will help you fetch better marks and the presentation it is the most important thing Uh, many times what happens many students they uh, write the same number of points or the same content but one gets very good marks other gets just average marks the main difference is the presentation how you present your answer in the exam is very very important so you must always each examiner nobody will read each and every word of what you have written 
the examiner always search for search for some keywords or the subheadings and then the key points which are written in the answer and then evaluates your answer nobody will go through each and every word whatever is uh, you have written and evaluate so keep that in mind that the presentation is the most important thing so next coming to your practical exam examination today i'll be discussing a few things about uh, more about the practical exam so first of all uh, you must keep these things in mind for the mbbs practical examination what are the things which the examiner will uh, expect from you first thing history taking history taking obviously is very important you must have taken a detailed history of all the presenting illness to all the uh, all the negative each and every negative history is very important and you must be able to substantiate each negative history why you have asked that question so whenever you are presenting your case each point which you say in your case presentation is very important and obviously our white army team is doing a very good job you are having lot of uh, this clinics uh, exposure so that will help you in gaining confidence next thing is examination so the method of examination is most important so the examiner he'll ask you how how do you do the particular test or what is the method of examination so for the ug level so each and every step of method of examination is very important and what they expect you is you must be knowing the basics and how you reach to that particular diagnosis so that is what they try to assess so after you finish your case they will go through the basic investigation plan so you must be knowing what are the different investigations which are required for that particular case and also about the different methods of treatment which are available even if you don't know the details of each and every investigation or each and every treatment modalities in detail it's not important it, it's not uh, they are not going to ask you so much in depth but you need to know the different modalities which are present so few additional aspects about uh, for the pg examination so for pgs details of each and every along with all the points which i have told you in the previous slide each and every investigation that you have complete details the complete procedure is very important and how you prepare the patient for ot also is important and the steps of each surgery pertaining to that particular case that is important and also obviously the latest advances you must be well versed or uh, they might ask you about all the latest advances and basically for the pg exam what they expect from you is is the patient safe with you whenever a patient comes to you uh, you should you should be in a position to handle it safely you should not cause any harm to the patient so coming uh, next coming to uh, certain important uh, points see basically there is no replacement for theoretical knowledge you must be completely thorough in your theory knowledge even in your practical exam whatever is pertaining to that case the theory you must be totally thorough with it and uh, some people they ask okay uh, medicine is so vast surgery is also so vast i don't know where to start and how to start first of all you can start by reading on a uh, case to case basis every day study is very important so whichever cases are admitted in the ward you can uh, whenever you go to your clinics you can see those cases and pertaining to those cases you can read that in your textbook so that is the best way uh, to begin with and uh, very important attend your wards regularly um, you may say okay the consultants are very busy in my unit the pgs are always tired they don't teach us anything but uh, why should i attend wards each and every day only whenever required i'll attend but that's not important whenever you go to the wards you'll be able to see all the patients you yourself examine as many patients as many cases as possible apply your theory knowledge to examine the cases and uh, sir william osler he has said the wards are the best libraries and patients are the best teachers so not, this cannot be replaced by only reading from textbooks and uh, as i have previously also emphasized just overnight reading that is not sufficient it's not important also whatever you have read throughout the year that is more important always have a proper sleep and this will give you a sound mindset in the exam that is more important and you will be very fresh to answer the questions which are coming uh, which are asked by the examiner and uh, before the exam never go to the exam directly always have a proper breakfast because hypoglycemia that blunts your thinking and when you are presenting yourself uh, to the practical exam uh, make sure that you have a proper attire you are uh, well groomed combed your hair well shaved uh, properly and then uh, you should have a proper conduct always wish the examiners whenever you meet them have a pleasant face never be too much tensed or never uh, always turn your face away from the examiner always face them have a pleasant face and what is most important is your presentation skills it's not the english which is important uh, how you present how confidently you present and how fluent you are in presenting that is the most important and 
this, this has an impact on the outcome. And always remember, the moment you enter the exam hall, the scanner and meter is on. Every action, what you do is being watched and every word uttered is being assessed. You may think, okay, you're examining the patient, the examiner is sitting on the chair, uh, speaking to his other co-examiners. So he is not seeing what you're doing. Each and every step, what you, whatever you're examining the patient, everything is important. If you do some blunders while examining the patient, even that will be taken into account for assessing your uh, final marks. And each word which you retract, it's also assessed and marked. You should never say, oh, sorry, sir, not. Every time you utter sorry, that will also have a negative impact on your marks. So ideally, they say sorry score should ideally be zero. It's, it should be as minimum as possible. Cannot be practically zero. And never make some loose statements while presenting the case. Each and every sentence which you tell is should be weighed. So never uh, make any statement which you never which you not intend to speak. Only whichever you are completely sure and firm. Only those statements you make in the examination. And there is nothing like fun or informal talk with the examiner. The examiner can make jokes, he can laugh, but you are supposed to be formal. On the day of the exam, uh, the examiner, you have to treat him like God. You need to be formal with him. You can't start making jokes with the examiner. So in terms of uh, cricket, if you want to tell the runs you score and the wickets you lose for everything, either you say or you do. And also which you don't say and which you don't do. Okay, everything is important. And uh, this one, history, most important, you start with your history. So that will create history. If your history taking is very good, if it impresses the examiner very much, you are well, well through it. Okay. And even your examination, the findings which you do in your examination, that will decide your fate, whether you pass or fail. So always be very careful, be extra cautious whenever you're taking the history and examination. And it's okay. Many times you need to cross check once again. Be very careful when you are presenting. And uh, many times it happens in the exam. So the examiner is uh, not listening to you. He is speaking to someone else or uh, he is not concentrating. But still, you must present it in such a way that he is fully attentive with you. And uh, the case presentation should be like a story and it should go on smoothly. And after you finish presenting, you should point to a possible diagnosis. So by the end of history, the examiner should have a probable diagnosis in the mind. And by the end of the examination, either a definitive diagnosis or a differential diagnosis should come in mind. And uh, in between, whenever uh, interrupted, always uh, you focus and answer to the point. There's no need to hurry up or give an answer instantaneously. You can take a few seconds of your time, but always answer to the point because never beat around the bush. No examiner likes beating around the bush. And uh, avoid any unnecessary confrontations. Uh, many times what happens, the examiner may say a point which you would have read it the day before and you know that that point might not be correct. But still, you must never have any confrontations with the examiner. On the day of the exam, the examiner is God. Whatever he says, you should just say yes and continue, proceed further. Don't start arguing with the examination. And important point, never start show off. You, you might know many recent advances, etc. But don't show off in front of the examiner. Answer all the basics and whatever is asked. And that is the most important. And uh, logical conclusions, they are the key to your uh, practical exam. And whatever, whenever the examiner asks you, only then you explain the logic. Otherwise, it's not required. Just proceed further. And uh, many a times, whenever you are losing track during your uh, case presentation, the examiners try to provide subtle, subtle hints and you must be sharp enough to pick up those hints and uh, uh, tell it in front of the examiner. So what happens is even when the examiner is providing you hints, many students are so tense that they're not able to pick up those hints and answer properly. And always stay focused and give crisp answers. So don't just give a long, lengthy, irrelevant answers. Nobody likes that in the exam. And analytical common sense approach to problem solving is the most important which is needed. And obviously correct diagnosis is the last requirement. Whenever you're presenting a case, you should know how logically you can explain the symptoms and you can explain the signs which you uh, examine to come to a diagnosis. The correct diagnosis can be something different. After investigation, he might be having a different diagnosis. But if you're logically correct, then don't worry. Never try to first find out the diagnosis and then back calculate. So it will blind your thinking and you'll be biased during your history taking. 
and uh, this will always uh, affect your final presentation so always go logically take history honestly and examine and then come to a conclusion so face the problem head on so let your mind work it will work even when the examiner questions you in the uh, viva and uh, next thing to remember okay case presentation is over next when you come to the investigations all investigations they are not done for fun so whenever you do an investigation do it only if it changes the course of the treatment and whenever the examiner asks you uh, how do you investigate this case start with the investigation of choice or the gold standard that is the important obviously in, in the uh, book you will find so many historical investigations which are not at all done nowadays and don't start listing all of them one by one always the most important thing to be told first and next thing uh, there are two factors in your exam one is factor h that is hard work that constitutes 90% and factor g that is god's blessings that constitutes about 10% so if you don't put in this 90% of your hard work then 10% of god's blessings won't be sufficient for you to pass in the examination so the secret to getting ahead is first thing is getting started so any work once it starts the flow goes on if you don't start at all then you will be much behind lagging behind in the race so what you can do always in the beginning start preparing for the common cases you know there are so many common cases for each subject so start preparing for those common cases and do it well in advance and whatever you people are doing now is it's very good and it's very much beneficial for your uh, final examination so you can do this for all the subjects but uh, for surgery i just shown you an example uh, how you can do it you can first list the common cases uh, obviously you'll be having long case and a short case so the most commonly kept long cases are thyroid breast abdominal mass pvd varicose vein and hernia and the short cases are ulcer and swellings like lipoma sebaceous cyst dermoid or you can get a hydrocele so like this first list out the common cases and start uh, studying each case one by one till you finish all of them and you can do this for all the subjects and what you need to concentrate when you are uh, taking the case in the examination for example in the long case a detailed history is mandatory a detailed examination has to be done and very important any other unrelated or unassociated pathology if found it must be mentioned for example i'll give you an example uh, one of the students uh, he was uh, taking a case of uh, varicose vein and then uh, he has done everything he has done all the tests everything perfect but uh, he has missed out that the patient also has an associated umbilical hernia every and the examiner has examined this patient in detail examiner knows that the patient has umbilical hernia so he kept on asking okay what else does the patient have what else and this poor chap he is telling all about varicose veins he tells about even the venous ulcer which is present everything and finally even again the examiner asking okay what else does the patient have anything else so if uh, you never miss out such important findings obviously for ugs that won't cost you your examination but for pg is definitely yeah if at all you miss such a finding uh, that my that will definitely cost you your exam so any other associated pathology if the patient is having that must be examined and that must be mentioned it need not be connected to your case but still it's very important to while you present the case and all possible investigations you should know and all the different modalities of treatment you should know so these are for long case whereas uh, there are so many differences when you are presenting a short case only the positive history is important and only the specific examination whichever you need to do or the local examination is important and diagnosis should be to the point and possible cause if any for example if it's an ulcer what is the cause of an ulcer like that and investigations also to the point which are the most important and coming to the treatment it can go anywhere and case presentation it is nothing but a storytelling now you people have this very good opportunity each day one person is presenting the case so you all have this practice of case presentation each and every day uh, sometimes okay some people they might not get an opportunity to present what they can do they can catch hold of some family member or some friend and then start presenting to them and as you can see in this picture even if no one is available okay catch hold of some pet dog and start telling the story so case presentation is nothing like a storytelling that gives you your confidence it boosts your confidence and it gives you the fluency when you present in a final examination and uh, some of the tricks which will help you after your case for example uh, your case presentation is done 
the afternoon session will be your different stations and uh, your case presentation okay it has not gone that well it has gone on an average i think so if at all you do very well in your uh, other things that will push you from uh, being failed to being passed so always never neglect the other things also for example okay you might be having these instruments uh, many times what happens uh, there are a lot of students taking the exam each day so the examiner might ask you okay pick up an instrument so what you can do beforehand itself uh, select a few commonly used instruments be well versed with each and every uh, thing of those few instruments some three four instruments which you uh, have selected previously so in case during the exam the examiner asks you okay fine pick up an instrument and tell about that so you can always uh, tell very confidently and in detail and the examiner also will be impressed with that same thing holds good for specimens beforehand itself you will be knowing about all the specimens which you will get in your exam so best thing is select a few two three of them and then be very much well versed so obviously you must read everything but this is just in case if you get the examiner asks you okay pick any and tell any any one of these so you can always choose the one which you have already well versed and uh, even if you are asked to speak about any topic so you can always uh, be well versed in one or two topics which you can speak fluently and continuously for about 5 to 10 minutes and you know, on the day of the exam if such a thing comes you will be already ready with that and uh, that same thing holds good for surgeries uh, commonly asked this appendicectomy or cholecystectomy so some of the commonly asked surgeries you can always uh, read thoroughly so that Uh, in the examination these points will give you bonus marks so that will help you from coming third or second to coming first or from just being failed to just passed so these these are the crucial areas where these things will come in handy and uh, coming to the examiners there are different types of examiners so you must uh, you must be intelligent enough to know what is, what type of examiner he is and how you must answer to that particular examiner some are old fashioned examiners and they expect you to answer the classical findings the age old tests and which are given from long time back and you must answer to them in such a way that uh, you should not quote about any recent advances or the latest some modification or some controversial issues they might not like such there are there are some other examiners who have just passed out and then they have they might be an assistant professor in some college and they would have come as your examiner so for them obviously Uh, they expect certain latest advances or certain latest additions in the textbooks which are given so depending on that you need to answer very cleverly in your examination that will fetch you more marks some some examiners they are highly knowledgeable they know each and every line of the textbook uh, for example some of the examiners they might be knowing each and every line given in bailey and lang so for that you uh, you should never bluff in the examination whenever you say something the examiner is definitely uh much more experienced and knowledgeable than you if he asks you should never say yes i am quoting from this book when you are sure that you have not read that book so if you have done a mistake just accept it and then proceed further never bluff bluffing in the examination will cost you dearly and some examiners have a lot of experience so they'll ask you more of practical questions so you must be able to answer to them uh in that aspect and obviously some are just seasoned examiners they have, they used to they will come each and every exam and they ask the most common commonly asked questions whereas some others they they uh, they might ask some out of the box questions or some very rarely asked questions so basically what you need to know is uh, what type of examiner how you must present to each one of them and uh, the last point uh, all of you are already well versed some are lenient and some are strict and you'll always be praying to god that you will go to the lenient examiner when you are presenting your viva and you will have you already are well versed with uh, the last point given here uh, some of the pitfalls what can happen in the surgical practical exam uh, i just want to give you a few of my uh, i just want to narrate a few of my anecdotes and uh, tell you where people made blunders and that cost them their exam so one one of my friends had got this uh, carcinoma of the breast uh, case so his exam was on the third day and on the first and second day everyone had presented Uh, as a six centimeter uh, lump in the breast, so obviously he also presented as a six, and he has uh, measured it and uh, presented it as a six centimeter lump in the breast. But uh, then the examiner uh, went and uh, examined, and uh, he told it is a four centimeter mass. So a six centimeter lump and a four centimeter lump, there is a lot of difference in the case of a CA breast. The entire staging, management, everything will change. So making such crucial mistakes will uh, cost you your examination. 
and uh, one of my other friends uh, he had got a case of hernia where in the examination examiner asked him how will you examine the urethra in case of a uh, hernia and uh, here what i would like to stress is when you use the terminologies each medical terminology is very important you can't just randomly use whatever gives similar meanings so uh, he told that uh, yet yeah, the I, the correct answer would have been to lift the scrotum and examine the urethra uh, but he mentioned as it is examined in the erect posture but then the examiner went on to ask what is the physiology of erection and it, the the viva turned out in a different direction so whenever you are using your terminologies be very careful in using them and always respect your teachers no matter what because on the day of your exam your examiner is god so never try to uh, tell anything against them or uh, try to raise a controversy if at all you feel some uh, point is not in favor of what the examiner is doing just tell yes sir and proceed because experience matters even though you would have read the textbooks the day before the exam your examiners would have a lot of practical experience before coming to your exam and uh, uh, obviously satisfying all the examiners it is not easy so as you can see in this picture what people think success looks like and what it actually looks like is entirely different so many times some examiners will not agree to what you are telling but somehow you need to uh, balance your presentation in such a way that at least you must satisfy the examiners to finally succeed in your examination so anyone even the expert in anything he was always once a beginner and there are obviously some good examiners in the exam and out of the lot you must identify them and whenever you are presenting try to look at them and uh, pick up the subtle hints which they are providing they will help you out never just put your head down and keep on presenting without looking at the examiners so sometimes examiners they can be ignorant in certain rare cases so don't worry never try to teach them no examiner will like that a student teaching them during the exam so it's okay uh, always whatever is most common you tell that uh, any other thing if the examiner asks you in particular then you mention it otherwise just leave it so what i'm trying to tell you is i'm not telling you it's going to be easy but i'm just telling you it's going to be worth it and uh, don't worry about the examiners so do your best that's the best you can do okay so always prepare well in advance and this will help you gain your confidence so whenever you go to the exam go with full confidence and present confidently and uh, whenever uh, any let it be any exam always you give your best don't worry about the result so there's a saying success does not lie in results but in the efforts so being the best is not important doing the best is all that matters so even in bhagavad gita there is a saying karmanye vadikaraste ma phaleshu kadachana it means you give all your maximum efforts and do your best leave the rest to god don't worry about the result god will take care and okay finally even the exam is done but uh, god forbid for whatever reasons there is a failure never worry okay you can always recover failure is never the end as long as it is not accepted as an end by you so what seems to be the end may actually be a new beginning so it does not matter how deep you fall what matters is how high you bounce back so let me give you an example uh, there was one of my friends who was highly intelligent he used to answer each and everything even in the clinics even in uh, the exam he, he used to know each and everything in the textbook highly knowledgeable uh, but then uh, due to some unfortunate reasons uh, uh, one more thing i want to tell you whenever you are uh, uh, you should have a very good uh, opinion your teacher should have a very good opinion about you never uh, allow any of your teachers to develop a grudge against you okay so that will if at all any professor or any teacher develops a grudge due to whatever reasons because of your disobedience or because of your answering back or whatever reasons it will you'll never be able to uh, come back in your practical exam no matter how you answer he knows how to catch hold of you and make you fail so i was telling you about this one of my friends uh, he was highly intelligent but uh, because of some uh, reasons he could, he failed in the exam but it's okay he never took it as a downfall during the six months which he had to again retake the exam he prepared very well and then not only for this practical and theory exam also for the next neat exam and uh, 
next whenever he he wrote this uh, theory exam he passed it with uh, very good marks as well as got the first rank in the next uh, qualifying examination as well so main thing is if at all uh, any failure is there never consider as the end or never go into depression always try to bounce back uh, never mind you can always come back 6 months doesn't matter but later you can always succeed in your life so what matters is uh, not the size of the dog in the fight but the size of the fight in the dog so always try to put in your all your efforts and uh, try to try to put in all your efforts and do the best possible in your exam so best wishes to all of you so may all of you have plenty of factor h and factor g which i have told you have a successful career and uh, keep this in mind practice like you have never won perform like you have never lost keep this thing whenever you enter your uh, practical exam so you will come out with flying colors thank you so much so kishan are you there yes yeah, suraj yeah, i am uh, very much there please yes, uh, yes. stress on the uh, like uh, about revision like yes, they yes, all yes. Uh, read a lot i agree they yes, read yes. regularly mm-hmm. what's really missing is uh, repeated revisions yes okay, so a very please, good point told by you importance of revision yes yeah. yes see the uh, importance of revision revision and is point, very i would like to hmm. i one more thing i want to ask you specifically hmm. there are two schools of thoughts one like you told for intelligence like you that's okay reading as many books as possible grab how much of knowledge as possible that's one part the yeah. other part for every student like me who cannot you remember are anything you are a top question come on <laughs> you are rank one student okay so <laughs> so oh, what i feel is i uh, better to better to stick on to one book and uh, read it thoroughly and repeatedly so that i will yes, have yes. a better photocopy memory because photocopy memory also important on the ex- day of exam you should remember where, uh, okay if you read or else what happens if you read multiple books on the previous day of the exam when you really want to revise something you can't read so many books i actually so, that point i wanted to stress be tackled? yes yes how actually could it be tackled better please please explain yes 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 benefit of see revision revision is a very very important uh, point as uh, kishan pointed out so for the theory exam for the theory exam as you said uh, keep one book read it thoroughly revise it again and again and then uh, that photographic memory will definitely help you get very good marks in the theory exam but what i stressed uh, reading about different books was in the practical exam so what matters is uh, not the points or not the way how you tell each and every point in the practical exam how much of different knowledge you have in the practical exam in the viva the examiner can ask in any aspect he can go so in that time obviously you can't revise the whole thing just before the exam so whenever uh, you have a lot of time for example if the exam is in december and you are still in april so you still have a lot of time so whichever topics which are given nicely in each particular book obviously there will be seniors to guide you telling okay in this particular book these chapters are given very nicely like that so those things you can read and then make notes and keep it so that that those points which are not given in the particular book which you will be reading for exam so that will be helpful for you to finally write the exam and uh, as you very well said for the theory exam keep one book and then that book you read it thoroughly again and again and then uh, as many times as possible revise revise and revise that will help you and this is the main point which distinguishes a person who comes first and a person who comes uh, fifth or sixth there is no difference in knowledge between the person who comes in the top 10 ranks the only difference is the person who has come first he would have revised it again and again and again whereas the person who has come fifth or sixth would have revised only once or twice so that is very important but but for the practical exam it is always advisable okay read one book but also have a try to acquire knowledge from certain different books because some points are not given in the other books and if you are able to answer those points you will definitely have an edge over the others in the practical exam yeah what i would like to add is you can read multiple books but uh, keep one book at and uh, that uh, yes. what are additional points given in other books make it a notes in the same one book yes okay, yes yes how about that suraj yes yes perfect that is perfect you can so make notes the day, yeah the previous day of the examination you should have only one book to revise in that all additional points everything should be written in your own correct, notes correct correct perfectly said so what you can do is you can keep that one book along with all the notes which you have acquired the knowledge from the various other books but relying on only one book and studying only one book for the exam 
you might not gain yeah. the complete knowledge to come in the top you might be able to pass the exam comfortably but not come in the top to come in the top you must know at least some things from even the other books also so you can as you can said uh, you can make notes and keep the notes and study only those notes along with the one book for the exam